Welcome to this new episode of The Context. Today I want to talk about a process that is so beautiful it should be universal. A process of learning by doing and sharing the experience. Well, as a matter of fact, it is a universal experience. That is how children learn since they are newborn. There is nobody uh, that uh, teaches children how to walk um, or even before walking how to crawl uh, and everything they do they do making mistakes and building on those mistakes to be better crawlers better walkers speakers and uh, in general human beings there is a big difference in my opinion between learning and education i always try to do to use the, the first expression rather than the second education is something that others do to you learning is driven by your passion your interests uh, and your desire to discover new pieces of the puzzle on the path towards applicable uh, information that you uh, own because you earned it and this process uh, is uh, not only more effective but it is also more joyful more uh, self-driven more empowering than not the passive expectation um, incredibly represented by the 19th uh, century uh, vision of a classroom where pupils are expected uh, to keep their hands uh, uh, behind their backs uh, as they are indoctrinated uh, to be um, perfectly uh, disciplined uh, subjects of uh, either the, the economic or the military or the political organization that uh, they should belong to. Uh, we are lucky that uh, society doesn't expect that kind of discipline today even if our school system and academic organization is still um, reflecting two three hundred years old uh, concepts and now uh, that uh, the schools all over the world are discovering uh, remote teaching and uh, remote participation through digital tools i hope they will discover also the power of this kind of uh, liberating uh, participation that is driven by the the children or even adults as they uh, seek to obtain new useful skills as an example Video courses are very popular, but are they effective? Are video courses a good way of uh, acquiring a skill? I have my doubts. I subscribed to many, many YouTube channels or even paid for video courses on Udemy uh, that uh, led me nowhere. I did not complete them because I would get bored. Uh, they didn't represent for me the kind of uh, hands-on experience that I want from things. Now, probably I am uh, overestimating the attention that I actually gave to those courses. And uh, it is certainly the case that uh, many of them invite the, the people following the course to then do exercises that are the kind of hands-on things uh, that uh, I am talking about. So I'm not saying that video courses are also not a good tool. As a matter of fact, um, YouTube and many other platforms are so good that uh, for a lot of uh, problems, they are a perfect uh, answer. You just search how to do X and the likelihood that you will find an answer on YouTube is very high, actually uh, increasing uh, towards uh, a certainty. And, and uh, it should even be the case like uh, on Wikipedia, where I always uh, respond to the expert uh, arrogantly sustaining that a given article contains the mistake. Uh, 
did the article contain a mistake 10 minutes later? Didn't you realize that you as an expert have the responsibility of correcting the mistake on Wikipedia, which is editable by you? So on YouTube, it should be the same. If you um, search for how to do X and that X is not uh, covered, but you acquire that kind of uh, knowledge, it should be your responsibility to create a five or 10 minute video about how to do X uh, so that the next uh, person searching for it uh, discovers that it indeed exists because you uh, you brought it to, to, to life. Now, the tools that we use for uh, hands-on learning, uh, acquiring hands-on knowledge, obviously are, are different uh, according to the specific context. It would be uh, quite absurd to believe that uh, you know something about uh, animal husbandry never having touched a, a chicken or a, a cow or that you know how to repair a car if you never attempted to, to do so. So there are many practical fields where hands-on knowledge is evidently necessary and leads to the kind of outcome that, uh, that we are seeking. However, uh, we have grown to, to, to be accustomed to so many fields where apparently reading about something is enough to pretend that you know it. For example, uh, business management uh, or consulting or whatever master degree uh, that uh, teaches case uh, studies and then maybe there is a group uh, that uh, uh, forms around the, a, a given challenge and they discuss it, but so often they don't go beyond discussing it uh, rather than just doing it. Uh, any um, course, any MBA uh, should be only uh, awarding a certificate if the person attending uh, the MBA is uh, doing the BA, a master in business administration, if you haven't administered a business, uh, is uh, an empty piece of paper. Now, I never attended an MBA, so maybe I'm wrong, and uh, uh, a very high percentage of the MBAs are requiring this kind of hands-on experience that I am talking about. To me, it doesn't look like it. Uh, many courses, uh, including many college courses, produce people whose theoretical understanding of a field uh, may be sound on a theoretical level, but when it meets uh, reality, uh, it proves to be in large part inapplicable or outdated or just misaligned with the concrete practices on the ground. Uh, and in, in many countries, uh, it is very correctly uh, uh, introduced in the curricula that the, the, the people attending college uh, or even high school should spend a large percentage of their time in the real world uh, of uh, a job, of uh, a corporation, uh, of a concrete uh, project sponsored by an industry where they are expected to perform, where they grow um, interpersonal skills, uh, ability to manage their own time, ability to um, uh, report on their progress, ability to, um, to, to, to gain uh, critical uh, input. And those things are, are extremely valuable further on, of course. Now, one of the reasons uh, why learning by doing and sharing is uh, so appropriate or even necessary in most cases, in my opinion, is because you must share your failed attempts in doing something. 
when you are uh, training to be a, a, a juggler or a, a, a trapeze artist, um, the first maybe, but the second very likely is impossible to be done alone. There will be somebody who trains you and the coach is going to give you the feedback of why uh, your somersault didn't succeed. And uh, you will listen to your coach and you will incorporate that feedback in your next attempt. And I don't know if a somersault uh, is something that one uh, learns how to do over the course of 10 one hour long uh, training sessions or 20 or five, whatever the number, progressively you get better, you get measurably closer to the objective until you achieve it triumphantly. And uh, of course, that is done in a manner that uh, doesn't kill you in the process. So you have a harness and safety lines and you are learning from somebody that uh, knows what uh, they are teaching you, what uh, feedback they are giving you, what are the things you must correct in order to get where you need to go the fastest. Now, the process of learning by doing in a safe environment is obviously necessary. We don't want uh, anybody to get hurt or to get killed because they are attempting something dangerous by doing and they make a fatal mistake early on and there is nothing protecting them or nothing preventing them from doing that mistake. Uh, and we are also uh, in an environment where you, you can try a lot of things, including dangerous things, and you have to have that kind of maturity and judgment that uh, tells you uh, what is advisable and what is excessively risky. And this is true in many things. Uh, if you want to uh, repair uh, an electrical appliance and you don't know that you need to unplug it first or that there could be condensers inside that give you a shock even if uh, the appliance is unplugged, well, um, you have to be very uh, careful or, 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 or very uh, much um, uh, not courageous, but uh, of the negative kind to uh, do it nonetheless, to attempt it nonetheless. Uh, and uh, there are uh, reasons why one could try and, and uh, run the risk anyway. However, in general, we should aim to always measure the risk of learning by doing and to know uh, what the process is going to be like, what kind of mistakes we can afford to make and how are we going to learn from the mistakes, incorporating the feedback and then getting better and better. Sometimes the coach is not available or uh, the, the feedback that we receive is uh, generic. It is not personalized. It is not interactive or sometimes the feedback is coming from the world in general, rather than specifically from people who have been assigned to you in order to um, help you uh, progress towards your goal. Uh, and the open uh, sharing of, of mistakes is something that is, is done in traditional classrooms, but it is always tainted by a negative label. You are punished for your mistakes rather than people telling you, well, there's nothing wrong with, with making a mistake. That is part of the process. Uh, the uh, Italian uh, electric utility company, uh, Enel, organized a, a huge worldwide contest for its employees where uh, they convened the winners and the title of that contest uh, was uh, my, it wasn't biggest, but uh, something similar to my biggest mistake, 
right? And the, 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 the fantasy, the creativity, the courage of both the organizers and the participants in this uh, uh, process uh, is, is exhilarating. Um, and you wouldn't expect it from a corporate giant, uh, very buttoned down and uh, uh, a very serious uh, uh, organization, obviously. But they were able to, to do it with the CEO there who uh, gave the prizes and who um, uh, commanded the employees coming from Argentina and Greece and, and other places in the world for the smart uh, mistakes that, uh, that they uh, dared to, to commit. So uh, in the past uh, couple of weeks, I have uh, also been on a learning uh, journey, uh, making all kinds of mistakes with a new uh, video format that hopefully you have uh, also seen. Uh, if you are subscribing to my uh, YouTube channel, then uh, the alerts uh, that I invite you to activate uh, could uh, tell you that uh, I have a new video every day under the new uh, format, searching for the question live. Searching for smart questions is kind of one of my guiding lights. And uh, I have always... Uh, thought uh, about live streaming. I did uh, occasional live streams in the past, already 10, 12 years ago, I actually went to look uh, the platforms that I used in 2008, 2009, when I would uh, live stream my uh, talks and workshops at Singularity University. Uh, and immediately already then, on, or, or when uh, uh, we organized uh, the H Plus uh, Summit at Harvard University in 2010, uh, in a few months it will be the 10th uh, anniversary of that event, and we uh, would uh, live stream the two days uh, conference uh, as well. However, I never live streamed uh, as uh, a, a continuous uh, process over the course of uh, many, many days uh, at the same time uh, with its own rhythm. And that is what I am doing now. And uh, in the live stream, I am using a large number of new tools, as well as I am alone rather than having uh, my team helping me because of uh, the lockdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And so I have to really use and do everything myself uh, making mistakes in, in the process and learning a lot from them. So I do invite you to come and watch uh, Searching for the Question live every day uh, at uh, 7 p.m. CET, 1 p.m. ET and 10 a.m. Uh, Pacific Time. And uh, I, I also have guests. Um, this is also new. The context is me talking searching for the question live, not always, but uh, often is uh, with uh, guests. Uh, for the moment, just one guest. In the future, I may have uh, more than one, and it will be fun to have multiple people as well. And uh, the uh, opportunity is really to, to, to experiment. So, for example, one of the experiments I'm doing is that I am uh, streaming simultaneously live to multiple platforms, uh, to Facebook, to YouTube, to Twitter, and even Twitch, the formerly exclusively e-gaming uh, platform that now is being uh, colonized uh, by other type of content as well. Also, uh, I am experimenting with uh, various kinds of hardware solutions. Uh, I am um, soon going to be using a gimbal, for example, um, because I also uh, am sharing the process itself of how I am putting the show together. So I'm talking about hardware and software and platforms. Uh, and uh, what uh, uh, also happened over the course of the past uh, few days is that uh, thanks to you uh, supporters on, uh, on Patreon, uh, I decided to start a Discord server where a community can form of people talking about the topics that we are covering. 
of exponential technologies, of how to reason better, of how to approach and solve problems better, of how modern digital tools can allow us to uh, bridge and overcome the physical isolation that we are um, uh, forced to, to suffer under, but uh, represent uh, uh, these uh, digital tools uh, extremely effective bridges of uh, communication uh, uh, with uh, other people uh, that uh, think uh, similarly or also differently uh, from uh, each of us. For example, one of the um, uh, one of the guests uh, I had on uh, one of the episodes of, of uh, SFTQL uh, was uh, Rehan Alakhwala, uh, a Pakistani gentleman uh, with a, a very large following uh, locally. And uh, a, a wonderful consequence of that conversation was that uh, a very large number, hundreds of his uh, followers, uh, reached out to me from Pakistan uh, to start uh, new kinds of dialogue. And of course, uh, their uh, interests, their challenges, their uh, aims and goals are different from mine. And as a consequence, establishing the conversation needs um, a reciprocal level of, of, of tolerance. The, the grounds for misunderstanding are a plenty. But it is also a very, very interesting uh, process that I am looking forward to be able to keep doing, right? And, and I would love for other countries to have uh, people like Rehan uh, who catalyze that level of uh, interest uh, to outreach for uh, other people in the world, uh, creating uh, all kinds of uh, unexpected and sometimes uh, crazy connections. So I uh, invite you uh, to watch uh, Searching for the Question live as well uh, on uh, YouTube or the other platforms that I mentioned every day. And I invite you to come to the Discord channel which uh, will be in the description as well, and uh, uh, to contribute to the conversation, not only with your comments, uh, but also there. Uh, and of course, uh, a great thanks for the Patreon uh, supporters who have uh, already um, found the way of uh, thanking me and my team as I uh, create uh, the context. I will be introducing uh, new uh, Patreon tiers uh, that will uh, enable different kinds of interactions and uh, different uh, degrees of uh, connectedness uh, to provide value to you, but also uh, to me as I learn from all the things that we are doing together uh, and sharing uh, with the rest of the world. Uh, this uh, is a, a wonderful journey and I am grateful for your support and your company as I am progressing on the path towards discovering new ways of uh, uh, understanding the world and uh, uh, giving feedback and sharing this uh, understanding on my side as well. See you next week.